everyone, it's Kathy from To Die House. Today is Sunday, May 2nd, 2021. I'm back. My mojo is stuck around. I got a little busy uh, with some things, so I'm a little late, but I am back. Um, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm going to talk about a cross stitch and um, a couple of other little crafty things. And I'll leave the quilting stuff toward the end. Yes, I'm still doing quilts. Not as much as I did before, so don't get too excited. Um, but if you're new here, welcome. And if you're um, a subscriber that's returning, welcome back. Uh, it's May. It's the very, very month of May, as you could probably see in my title. Um, and I, there's a reason that I'm saying the very, very month of May, and I'll show you that in a bit. So I have um, a little bit of haul, which will probably be uh, toward the end of the video. I'll show you my whips. I have a couple of finishes. In fact, let me pull that out right now. <clears throat> there it is. Um, I have an, un an unpressed finish. <laughs> um, so I have a finish. I have some whips going on. I have um, some fun things to show you. I have, a, I have a little mini finish. It was not a big one. And uh, some quilting. So yeah, so let's get started. Hopefully this won't be a long one, but I say that every time and then you know what happens. So the first thing is, actually I'll show you my finishes first. My unpressed finishes because don't hold it against me. It's not that big. But uh, the last time we were together, I showed you that I had started Octopus's Garden and I finished that. So that is the Blackbird Octopus's Garden. I used all the called for colors on this. Um, with the exception of the waves and the words. And I think the date. Um, I used a, a darker blue for those. But this fabric is a 36 count solo dye from Silk Weaver that I had in my stash. And um, yeah, it's done. And I made a mistake somewhere. I was off by one stitch. Like, ooh, that is a wicked crease, isn't it? Um, I was off by one stitch over in this area up in here. No, actually, it was on this side. Because by the time I worked my way across, it revealed itself. But I already had too much in to go back and worry about ripping it out. And I don't know where the mistake is because I never went back to find it. I was like, you know what? I can make this work. So, Octopus's Garden by Blackbird Designs, part of their Magical Mystery Tour series. And I had mentioned, um, too, they have their models stitched on like a cedar plank. I went for more of a blue color, a blue oceany color. So that's my one finish. My other finish was just a very small, I showed this on my Instagram as well. Um, just this little small pillow with a bunny flower and carrot pin stuck in it. I think this was a free chart that I got with the purchase of the pins and it was charted by Nikki's Creations. So, um, I just finished it with some pretty little fabric across the bottom and a gray on the back. So that was... That's an FFO. It's teeny, but it's still an FFO. They all count. And I guess that's it in the way it finishes. Um, I'll leave that for plans because I have a couple plans going on there. So let's go for whips. I'm doing this deliberately because I love the crinkle. Crinkle makes me happy. The zip makes me happy. So I'm part of the um, the Circle of Friends Club through the Silver Needle. And I renewed that this year. Um, I really like them. They send you the most darling kits. And they're fully kitted with even all the finishing things generally that you need. So the one I'm working on right now is actually from last year's club. And it's Scattered Seat Sampler Out on a Limb, the little wren. Um, this is kind of like my talking while stitching piece because 
it's just a few colors and they're pretty well blocked so you can just you know kind of stitch without having to worry too much about counting generally I try to outline a space and then just spend some you know some time filling it in while I'm talking so that's out on a limb the little wren and it does it comes with the fabric to finish comes with a plus card Why do my flosses always get tangled? There we go. Just a little floss card. So that should be done probably in the next week or so. Okay, so another um, kit that I got from the Silver Needle Circle of Friends group. Um, I'm going to be doing a little drum tutorial. I'm basically using Vana's instructions because it's already out there. And, and it her instructions have worked so well for me that... Um, I think people just sometimes visually need to see it going together. Um, but if you're looking to, to finish something into a drum finish, I will link dr Vana's drum finish below. Um, there's nothing that I would ever say or do that um, is different than what's in that video. She taught me. so, <laughs> and, and I love her instructions. She's very step one, step two, step three, step four. Do this, do this, do this. And if you follow it, you will come out with a really nice uh, finished piece. But in our group, um, some people just wanted, I think, just a fun day to get, to get together and put together a drum. Um, so I was like, well, I'll eat that. So I'm not really teaching it. I'm just sort of like facilitating the drum making. Oh, that was so bad. <laughs> All right, back to the stitching. So this was part of the Silver Needle. Uh, club as well. It's a Bent Creek each day and it's got this little, it, I liked it because it's very summery, summery looking, not summery as in, let me sum this up, um, summer as in S-U-M-M-E-R-ish. Summer. Kathy. Summer inspired. How's that? Um, so yeah, it's this cute little drum and the saying that goes around the bottom, you see the each day there, but it does say <clears throat> in full, each day provides its own gifts, which is a very lovely sentiment. So I've been, I started that. Uh, I'm trying to get this finished. <laughs> Jeez, Kathy, you're trying to get this finished. You're not. Get it together. Um, <clears throat> I need to get this finished for the drum tutorial. But that's where I'm at. But again, big blocks of color. When you are stitching, um, it goes by pretty fast. I just had a start the other night, so yeah, it's really cute. And I love drums. I love doing that finish. It's just it's such a beautiful way to display your stitching. I mean, all ways are beautiful. Flat folds are beautiful. They're all beautiful. But it just happens to, I don't know, for some reason it has an extra appeal to me. One thing I'd like to do is get, um, who is it that I saw? Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. I was talking about getting a Lazy Susan, and I guess somebody sent her one. And I was like, I wonder if they make like little coaster size Lazy Susans that I could stick my drums on. So you just spin around. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Random thoughts, you know, how they flow through my head. So moving on. Uh, we had a full moon. I told you about this um, project that someone in my stitching group, Helen, hi Helen, uh, sent this to everyone. And it's the Once in a Blue Moon by Calico Confectionery. And we had a full moon. So I need to be more... Um, intent when I'm pulling my colors I think so the last time I showed you it was here and you would say nothing's changed how is that a whip how did you do anything on it <clears throat> I did fill in the cat and the pumpkin face from last time and I had started to do the branch that goes under here like in the picture right so the colors I pulled for the branch 
I didn't like. So I literally put that whole branch in and took the whole branch out. Because there was no part of me while I was, I like I had this thing in my head that was like, just keep going. It'll work out. And then when I got to the end, I'm like, I still don't like it. So, progress in, progress out. <clears throat> so there's a, that's kind of like a net zero with the exception of filling in the pumpkin and uh, filling in the cat. I think I did the pumpkin's eyes. Not a whole lot. Remember this boy? He's still here. He's had some allergy issues. We all have right now. We're all like, you know, it's spring. Everything's blowing. Pollen everywhere. Um, so my boy has been on allergy medicine, but it's doing its job. He was, um, he was like grooming himself to the point where he was down to the skin. And I took him to the vet and the vet was like, well, we can give him a cortisone shot and see if it's an allergy. So they did that first I and mean, it stopped him from grooming himself excessively. So we knew that there was an allergy problem. Many tests later, um, he's allergic to like, he's allergic basically, and I think this happens with a lot of cats, he's allergic to his food. So we had to go back and look for foods that, um, that don't contain flaxseed. Because I guess they put flaxseed in to help with their coats a lot. And he'd been on that food since he was a kitten, but he somehow developed an allergy to it. So we changed out his food. It does help. He still does get his allergy medicine a couple of times a week, but it's not nearly as frequently as it was uh, initially to try to keep him from over grooming. So, so he's on the he's on the mend, but he's doing good. He's doing good. Okay, next whip. Uh, I will probably be working on this sometime today for um, Brenda and Laura's Blackbird Stitch Along first weekend of the month. I think they're going to do it every month, right? Blackbird Stitch Along. I think it's, I'll put the hashtag below. I think it's BBD Weekend SAL or something. Um, this is... Justice for All. Let me show you the chart. I'm happy. Uh, it's an oldie. Justice for All. And the last time I showed this to you, I was I just had one wing in, but I finished kind of the outline. Here's the thing. This I struggle with this. And let me know if you do too. I struggle with this. <clears throat> it's off on one side by one stitch. It doesn't affect anything else in the piece. I can still make it work. But there's part of me, I don't know if it's a blackbird thing, because I struggled with this with the octopus's garden too. That's like, it's gotta be exactly like the chart. Not color-wise, but stitch-wise. So, you can't tell. But I am feeling compelled to go back and just tear out a little section and fix that. So I will try to be, I will try to work on this a little bit, but um, my Sunday stitch is another clip that I will show you. Right now I have this in my Made by Mama Joan bag. Isn't that a pretty bag? And it's just three colors. A red, a black, and a blue. And the fabric that I'm using is a 40 count. Um, it was a Victorian motto, so it doesn't have a name to it. Okay, and then lastly, this is my Sunday stitch. So this is really, I'll put maybe put a few stitches in on the Blackbird one just so I can get, um, so I can participate in the Blackbird uh, weekend. But really, I think after... I get a few stitches in there. I will be going back to this because I'm get, oh, I'm rounding the rounding third and heading for home. So this is Ink Circles After the Roses, and 
Barb from Lost and Floss and I started a stitch along. So I'll put in the the um, hashtag right here. Um, it was started a year ago yesterday. It was started on May 1st, 2020. And I'm like, I should have had this done. So it's, I'm, it's like full steam ahead. I'm almost there. So it's not an un unreasonable or unachievable feat. I just need to focus. I need to get, put my head down and focus and get it done. So this is where I am at. So I just have this final quadrant up here in the corner to do, and then I will be done. And I am stitching this on 36 count Rue Green. And I, you know, when I'm stitching on it, I'm like, oh, it's very pretty. But then when you hold it up and you look at it, I'm like, oh, boy, that really is so pretty. Now, I think Barb is doing hers in all the called for colors. I just pulled from Stash to do mine. And in some areas, I'm using the same color, but I'm I'm using like these, um, like these twiggy branches in here is the same color as these up here, right? Yeah. So these twiggy branches right in here are the same as these. It's just that down here I used one strand of brown and up here I used two to give it a different, hold it closer, maybe you can see it. So, and now that I'm like looking at it, I'm like, oh, this is so beautiful. I can't wait to get that done just because it's so pretty. So that is after the roses. So that's kind of uh, where my whip pile is. I haven't done a lot of stitching, to be honest. Um, I've just been a little... I've done a lot of stitching and ripping out. So I feel like I'm not making a lot of forward progress. And I think you just go through periods of time that are like that. Uh... One thing I know that I talked about last time was um, the Needlework Press Book of Days. And I did start to use it. So you can see, I mean, I'm filling in. I have have stitches done. Now you could say, hey, slacked off here. I'll show you why. Um, actually, I should fill these in with what I was doing so that I know... Um, what I was doing here that is still it's a craft and it's something I've been working in my craft room on but um okay so that's that um a couple of things that I'm going to start this week my friend Mo who I met at the New Jersey retreat in 2018 and she is just I saw her again at stitch con um and she is just one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. She's such a nice, nice person. And I just, she's so gracious. And, and, and she's just, she's just a great person. Did you ever just click with somebody, you connect and that, that's her. She very graciously, um, she has a copy of the coveted Prairie Moon, Thine is the Trick and the Treat. And has a list of people that this is circulating to who all want to stitch it. So I think Prairie Moon, I'm not sure. I think that the daughters of the, the original designer have started a website where you can get these like in PDF form. But she very graciously loaned me her copy of this. And I really need to get jumping on this so I can get it back to her. And... Um, get it on to the next person on the list who wants to stitch. So um, I've had it in my possession for a while. I need to get on it. So this is, again, Prairie Moon. Thine is the trick and the treat is the chart. And it's like gold. I feel like I should have white gloves on the handling of <laughs> And what I'm stitching it on is um, this, I think it's Williamsburg. Christmas in Williamsburg, I believe, from uh, Under the Sea. So, and I'm using, 
it's more of a gingerbready color, but I, I just think it's so pretty and I've been jonesing to use it. So I'm just using black licorice from Gentle Arts. So that's going to be that. So I will be starting that this week. Um, I feel like if I can get, um, after the rose is done, like within the next week or so, then uh, I'm going to go in full bore with, with the Prairie Moon one. Not necessarily as a Sunday stitch, but I might work on it until, like, just straight through, just to focus until I'm done. Um, yeah, it's that it's that great. And I need to get it back there. Like, I'm really feeling that I need to get it back. The other thing I'm going to start is now that I finished Octopus's Garden, next in the Magical Mystery Tour series, for me is Long and Winding Road. My friend Lori from Once Upon a Stitch did this and it's beautiful. So um, I will be getting this kitted up this week and starting this. I was going to try and do this for my Blackbird Sunday. Sorry, Betsy. Because Betsy was like, hey, I'll join you. And I was like, yes, please do. I just didn't get it kitted up in time. So, but I will say, Betsy, it is now in a bag. So it's on the list. And then, okay, so before I go into haul, it's a very, very lovely month. And Audrey and I have decided to do a strawberry exchange. So if you watch uh, Stitchy Witch 42 Audrey, she um, was watching Crimson Greenway and um, saw this beautiful black velvet strawberry, fabric strawberry um, that she had made. And then Audrey went on like a strawberry binge making strawberries. And I was like, oh, they're really cute. I commented on her video. They're really, really cute. So um, she was like, hey, let's do a berry exchange. And I was like, hey, let's. So much of what I've been doing this week has been making strawberries. So I will not show you the ones that I am sending to her. I will leave that up to her um, to show. But I will show you the ones that she sent me, and I'll show you a few other things as well. So first she sent me these. They're so darling. Let me. So she sent me this little plaid berry with the button on top. Aren't they cute? Yeah. That berry in there. And then I think this is so pretty. And I... Like, I'll leave it out year-round, but it's really Christmassy to me. This um, green fabric with the rose and the lace on the top. Look at her finishing on the top. I mean, she is, she is just... I'm like, dang. So pretty. And then she asked me what color I liked. <clears throat> and I said pink, so she sent me this little pink berry. That pretty woven fabric with a bow on the top with a bead in the middle. And her, like, she, you did a great job. These are really, really cute. So, thank you, Audrey. Your berries, um, now that I've gotten some time to work on them, are going to be on their way to you this week. So, I did make some other berries as well for myself. Um, I'm working on them. Do I have my, where's my, I'll show you my in production file or pile. Um, so the one that I did was, um, I did this like really big berry, this mode of fabric that has like roses and flowers on it. And then I just put a big loopy, bow on the top and now I'm I packed mine with the uh, crushed walnut shells and then like up to here 
and then the rest in batting. But you can just use all polyfill batting, you know, or polyfill. Probably more economical and less, a lot less messy. And then I just did this little teeny one, this little, this was leftover fabric I had from my Christmas quilt. <laughs> just a red button and a, and honestly, I totally copied Audrey's, like cut a circle out, tack it down in a few places. It makes these little wavy edges. So cute. So darling. But the one thing that I decided to do, um, these are adorable. <laughs> I love them so yeah, much. I love these strawberries. I would love to have like a summer basket of berries. And so what I did was I made one of my favorite things is blueberries. I love them. They're like that tart. Oh, my mouth just watered. So I made these little itty bitty blueberries. And I just made a whole bunch of them. I'm going to continue to make them. <laughs> There's no need. I don't know. Can I hold them up with that? There you go. So I'm just going to continue to make little baby blueberries so I can have like a little, and I do have, um, I have a ceramic, you know, the, the pints that the berries come in. I have a ceramic one that I got on Etsy years ago. And I was like, well, I think I'll just do a pint full of blueberries, throw some strawberries in, and just have a basket of berries. So that's what I've been up to. That's been my major focus this week, um, getting those berries done for Audrey because I really wanted her to have them. So, so they're on their way, and I'll let you show them, Audrey. I'm not going to show them. Okay, one thing I want to tell you, though, um, from a production perspective, these are the berries, the strawberries that I have yet to make. So all I did was on my Cricut, it came with a rotary blade so you can cut fabric. I just put um, a layer cake square on for the larger ones, a layer cake square. I had it cut a circle and then cut the circle in half. And when you get that, you have a circle like this. And then when you cut it in half, you have two pieces like this. All you have to do is fold your fabric over this way, fold the straight edges, the curved edges to the top, and then you have a cone and just seam it down the one side and you're ready to start your strawberry. So it's an easy way to do it is just to cut a bunch of circles and slice them right in half. And then you can get two berries out of one piece of fabric. Um, that was for a layer cake size, which I think is 10 inches square. Then I did the same thing with these little charm pack pieces where I did like a four and three quarter inch circle around and then cut them in half. And that's when I got like this size, which is smaller, you can see. Um, and then I have even some little, actually that might be, that might be a bigger piece of fabric because I think these were the, the little five inch ones. So. <clears throat> so this was the layer cake the red is the layer cake size this one I think I just cut from another scrap piece of fabric or I cut two smaller circles on that 10 inch layer cake and then this little bitty one in the bottom is uh, from the 5 inch square so you can make your circles as big or as small as you want them and um, yeah and then all you have to do is do a running stitch around the top, start to pull it close, stuff it with your polyfill, then just yank it and it closes all the way up and then stick. You ready for this? I've been busy with my Cricut. <clears throat> I cut some tops out of felt on my Cricut. So I have all different sizes to go along with my different size little cones. We have this little beady one. So that's what I did. I just um, set my Cricut up one day. It takes, it does take a, you have to use the rotary blade on the felt as well. It does take a while. I think it took over an hour for it to cut all these pieces. It's not like you're going to have them in five minutes, unless you do like one or two. Uh, but I was like, hey, give me 30, <laughs> 
because I never do anything small. I'm like, go big or go home all the time. Um, so then I also did for the blueberries, I have just a pile of like itty bitty teeny tops for them. So what I do for the blueberries, maybe I'll do a tutorial or I'll have Darren help me do a tutorial. Um, I had my, I went again on my Cricut. I just took fabric. My friend Megan, hi Megan, uh, sent me a bunch of fabric strips. So what I did was I sewed them all together. Then I put interfacing across the back. Then I put that on the cutting mat for my Cricut and had it cut the circle. So the interfacing was already on the back, right? So then I just did a running stitch all the way around like you would when you're making a yo-yo. Get over here so you can see it. Running stitch all the way around, uh, cinched it up, threw a little ball of batting in there, and it takes very little batting just to make these plump little blueberries. And um, cinched it up, and then I took one of my little itty bitty baby toppers, when it's all cinched up, and I just ran that around and pulled. The more you pull the thread, the more it cinches in the fabric, right? And you know that from stitching. Um, yeah. And then just tie it off and then you got a little plump blueberry, blueberry. So I will say it's a lot of hand sewing, obviously. Um, when I seamed these cones up on the side, I just, I had a stack of them next to my sewing machine and I just would fold, sew, fold, sew without even cutting the thread. So I would, I think they call that chain piecing. Um, so I would just chain sew them and then cut them apart. And then I have a whole stack now. And I wanted to make maybe some, like a patriotic bowl. So that's my blueberry story and my strawberry story. And it's a very, very great month. And thank you, Audrey, for my beautiful berries. I love them so much. And um, I'm going to put them... Right now, they're in my two-tiered tray. But I think uh, once I get more berries made, these will be at the top of the pile in my berry basket. Because they are gorgeous. They're just so darling. I love them so much really sweet so what a great idea I love when somebody comes up with something really great and I'm like I'm on board with that okay so that's the berry portion of the program a little bit of haul um, I may have shown a couple of these to you last time I'm not sure that I did though maybe I did maybe I didn't um, yeah, just go. Well, actually, this is from the um, Circle of Friends where I'm doing the other two whips. This was the most recent. It's Erica Michaels Vintage Garden Smalls. Speaking of which, look, I'm getting plenty of practice for finishing this one. It's got a little berry. I think that's a new book. Again, comes all kitted up. Everything you need. I'm really so great. Um, so I got that. Um, this, I think, was around Expo time that I got this. And it's, um, I'm not sure, if somebody knows this, please comment below. But it's Little House Needleworks, but Tumbleweeds. So I think that may be like a division of Little House Needleworks, where it's all these like fun sayings and things. It says it right on it, a division of Little House Needleworks. So this must be like the line where they have the fun sayings, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, and it's called, it's called Legendary Girls. It's chart number seven. And it says, I figure if a girl wants to be a legend, she should just go ahead and be one. And I loved it. I did get um, Secret Garden from Tiny Modernist. Isn't that pretty? It's called Secret Garden. I think my friend Kim might have model stitched this. If you look this right way, you can see. Oh, if you look the right way, I don't have my glasses on. <clears throat> if you look the right way, you can see that the whole world is a garden. Isn't that true? 
I love that. I did get um, a little late. I may have shown this last time too. From Misty at uh, Luminous Fiber Arts, the Spring Scamper. I thought it was so cute. I love her rabbits. Her rabbits are really beautifully designed. Like, sometimes you see a rabbit and you're like, what happened to you, rabbit? Hers are really... I would pull these rabbits out and stitch them elsewhere. I love them. Um... I may have shown these to you. Um, this is Stacy Natch Holly Basket Sewing Roll. So that's the name, Holly Basket Sewing Roll. It's very kind of sparse looking, but I really kind of like that about it. And the finishing is you can roll it up into a sewing roll. Also, Stacy Nash. Rose Cottage Sampler Pen Keep. I've seen a lot of people uh, working on this one, but it is very beautiful. It's Stacey Nash, Rose Cottage. I love this one so much. I think I may have already shown it to you, though. I'm going to show it again, because why not? If it's that good, show it twice. And it's Stacey Nash, Be Kind Sampler. And Ryan, you can't get in there, so it's being kind of sampler. I, that flower border is just killing me. It's so beautiful. And Ryan, stop. Um, he's trying to open a cabinet door, and there's like a lot of wood finishing things, and it would be like an avalanche on my little cat. So he's just being naughty. The springtime, the tulip drum set. I've seen other people working on this as well. Heartstring samplery. It's starting to feel like, geez, maybe I, I did show these to you. Um, my necessity, heartstring samplery again. Their coffee samplers are just. I'm sorry if these are all duplicates. I didn't go back and watch my last video to see. Oh well. Um, this is Little Stitch Girl. I think he's so cute. Past the time, but Shamrock. And I love this. I know it's because I'm a redhead and so it just sucked me right in. But it's a tiny modernist mermaid garden. I think it's so pretty. Wouldn't that be pretty next to my octopus's garden? Right? Okay, this one. Let me show these two first, and then we'll talk about the last one. This one, these two, um, Leela Studio. They're so, they're, oh, they're so pretty. They're the birds, the seasons. I may have shown this again as well. But the winter and the fall. And then Seasons Blessings 2, which is summer and spring. I think I may have shown these to you already. Who cares? They're beautiful. Show them again. Okay. So I was going through, um, I have that, here it is. I have the Sampler and Antique Needlework DVD set that has like, they, they're no longer printing. But I bought this DVD because I saw some samplers that I liked. And I, copied the files onto my computer so I could browse through. So one night with a cocktail in hand, I was browsing through and I saw so many things that I would love to stitch, but I was like, hey, paper patterns upstairs. Get on those first. Um, and I'll go back, I'll go back and, and look again. There are a couple that I tagged to stitch. Anyway. There was an ad in one of those magazines, because really it's just a PDF version of the magazine that was originally printed. And I was like, what's that? That's so pretty. I love the colors. The Chester County Collection. It's old. It's an oldie. But apparently there was this entire collection that was published. 
I don't know which I knew when because it does not say. 1987. I was out of high school for three years in 1987. Anyway, I loved it. So I found somebody on eBay who was selling it and I grabbed it. For, and it wasn't expensive. It was like maybe 10 bucks. But look at the colors, right? And it's Elizabeth. I say Pusey because I think of Gary Busey and just change the B to a P. So I say Elizabeth Pusey. But look at the colors in it, right? I love it. But then when I got it, I read the saying and it talks about fearing God. And I was like, look, I'm not religious, so... But I just didn't like the whole fire and brimstone approach of like, be fearful of the punishment you'll receive if you don't behave yourself, which is basically the gist of the saying. And yet, it says, fear God and he will be a tender father unto thee. I don't like that saying. I'm sorry, Elizabeth, but why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? You should not be afraid. So, she was 12 and stitched this in 1772. It's thought she was a resident of Delaware County, Pennsylvania at the time she stitched a sampler. I guess it's relative to the time that she was alive and stitched this, right? That was sort of the nature of religion then. But it just made me feel like as much as um, my opinions and attitudes about it now are different than when even I grew up because I was, I went to church and Sunday school. My parents had me do that. Um, my attitudes now as an adult are different. But I was always taught that God is love. And so why would you be afraid of love? It just, it's a whole mental thing. So my question to you is, would you change it? Because I feel like I really want to. But I really also want to honor this girl. And I thought maybe I would just change the one word that's really throwing me from fear to love. And that way, maybe change the narrative around Elizabeth's experience a little bit. Um, the, that also settles well with me. Um, and then keep the rest the same. But I, when I saw it, I even said to my stitching group, I'm like, this really disturbs me that this young girl was taught to fear God. You know, I mean, the saying, put the fear of God in you, didn't come out of nowhere. It bothers me. I'm sorry, Elizabeth, that you were taught that because that's, I hope you didn't live your whole life in fear. But you also stitched a beautiful sampler. So, I think that's what I'm going to do. But it, it, what are your thoughts? You know, um, I'm not trying to get into a debate about religion or anything like that. I just kind of was like, do you ever have something that has a verse or a saying on it that it just doesn't sit well with you? And you want to change the narrative around it. This is the, really the first time I've ever come across something that... I've had them before where I'm like, yeah, I don't like that saying or whatever. But not to the point where I was like, I need to, I need to stitch this, but I need to make it right. <laughs> I need to do right by you, Elizabeth. So that's my haul. Okay. We're done with the stitching portion. I told you. wasn't going to be short. We're already 40, min 40 minutes in. And I'm blathering on. So let's get on it. <clears throat> okay. Finally, quilting. I am... I have two finished quilts. One's a big one, one's a little one. And I'm working on another quilt right now. So, um, you over there. I showed this to you last time. This was, this is my spring summer quilt that's on my couch now. It is done. I quilted it myself. This um, fabric is Daybreak. Three Sisters is the designer for Moda. And I, when I quilted it, I just did straight lines. Oh, and here's Diana. 
I love my paisley. Here's my paisley back. My lines are getting better, right? They're still not like perfect, but. Remember when I was complaining about like, this ever be done? Yes, it was. I just needed to buckle down and do it. So that is my quilt. And I'll put um I'll put a picture up in here of of it on the couch, I think, so that you can see it in all its splendor. Every time I put a picture up from my friend Kim, uh, Crafty Kim from Canada. Every time I put a picture up in my living room, she's like, all that wall space, and you don't have a sampler on it. <laughs> okay, um, the second quilt I finished was Daphne's quilt, and here's a picture of Daphne, or a couple pictures of Daphne with her quilt. And it's so cute. It's not big at all. It's just a little quilt. My little dog's quilt. But here's the fabric. It has bones and bark and play. And I did a disappearing nine patch pattern on it. And on this one, um, here's the back. It's just puppies, you know, all different dogs. Um, this one I free motion quilted. And basically, I just, I went all over the place. I had no rhyme or reason or pattern in mind. I just quilted all over the place on it. And she snuggles up to it all the time. And she loves, I knew she would love a quilt. I knew it. So my girl got her quilt from her mom. And I love that. So it's little, but she loves it. Okay, I think that's it. That's all I have for you today. I will edit this down so it's a reasonable amount of time. Um, yeah, I hope to see you um, in a month or less. I'm still feeling good. Mojo is still back. So let's roll with that. And I hope you have a merry, merry, very merry month of May. And um, enjoy all this beautiful weather if you're in this hemisphere. And uh, enjoy your cooler weather if you're in the southern hemisphere. Now I'm becoming geographically... What? I can hear you. You're saying, end it. Stop. So I will. Um, be well. Take care. I'll see you in a few weeks or a month-ish. And um, thanks for stopping by and spending some time with me. Take care. Peace.